Next curve. Really uncomfortable. Chairs. Okay, like leaning back like this. Yeah. Hey everyone, this is Leonard Lee, executive analyst at Next Curve, and I'm here with Uncle Earl, the oh. criminal. <laughs> Howdy, everyone. Wants to incriminate himself. Yeah, Earl Lum of EJL Wireless. And uh, we are here at MWC Las Vegas 2023. And this is day three. This is the final day of the event. And Earl and I are going to do a little bit of a micro recap here. We'll probably do a more extended one next week. But, um, you know, I thought, hey, why don't we talk about some of the key takes and highlights that we saw from the event in the past three days. So uh, do you want to start or do you want me to start? Um, I'll start with one that was complete, that's completely out of my normal space uh, where I focus on, which is on the RAN and all the hardware and equipment. Found a little company out of Spain called Speakatech that actually has some AI and VR and a sensor vest that they put on a person and if that person is in the middle of having a heart attack it'll scan within a minute and actually create a 3d model of that particular person's heart and where there might be some problems from an ekg perspective and then you can send that couple of hundred meg file over to the hospital where the doctor's waiting for this person in the er and actually have a game plan going uh, similar to what you know this oh. the whole notion of having an mri built into an ambulance for I don't know how many, many tens of millions of dollars yeah. and you can scan the person in this 5G world of getting all the health information to the hospital before the patient arrives. Right. This seemed like a much easier approach to, uh, specifically focused on cardiology. Uh, that was really cool. So that was my one little nugget that I found that it was really neat. That's really off script for you. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so on the RAN side, the stuff that you normally cover. On the stuff that I normally cover. I mean, let's talk about Open RAN because that, yeah, you know, that uh, uh, that's the big question everyone's asking. I, I think like, the the shoe happened? that dropped on Monday prior to the show from Ericsson kind of maybe set the tone for what I was going to, what I was expecting to see here. Yeah. And in talking to a lot of the hardware caught server guys, you know, they're pretty much all doing similar things, none of which from a wireless perspective in my mind is anything that I would want in terms of trying to plummet at a macro cell site. But that's kind of besides the point because it's really about the operator choosing whichever server guys they like and right. for whatever reason. And then everyone just says, sure, fine. And it's not really competition at, a, you know, at the open RAN level, it's competition from the operator already having had a, a pre-existing relationship with that server company for other things within the network, right? Oh, and it just gets pulled along. Yeah. Uh, in terms of, you know, within that market and this whole private wireless open RAN, uh, one of the companies, G-Rain, which is out of HTC, and they were at the Supermicro booth, pretty cool, complete network in a box. Core ran all on one, a one new server in a ruggedized box mm -hmm. that you could just take out into the field as kind of their demo kit. Thought that was kind of pretty cool and they wrote all the software and, and that was a nice self-contained end-to-end -end solution that someone can buy to get at least some understanding as to how this private network stuff is going to work. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, for me, I think uh, private networks, right? Uh, private 5G networks is the big uh, story here. Uh, it's pretty clear that things are pretty nascent. We have a long way to go. A lot of problems that have to be worked out, um, surprisingly, in many fronts beyond just the, the technology itself. Um, I, I think one of the things that uh, the industry is going to be grappling with over the next two years is figuring out, well, how do we deal with the heterogeneous nature of private 5G uh, network opportunities, right? And so as enterprises are looking at uh, or entertaining the, the idea of uh, implementing uh, private 5G networks, uh, the challenge is going to be how do we make this uh, technology or these deployments make sense? And uh, considering the cost and the complexity that you're dealing with, with 5G and that, you know, oftentimes that complexity is necessary to deliver the differentiated aspects of uh, emerging 5G technology. So we're looking at 5G Advance coming, right? There's an, a bunch of new feature sets and as uh, enterprises are looking forward, 
uh, at, at what are some of the possible um, capabilities that a 5G network, a private 5G network would bring to them. Uh, there's this long, <laughs> you know, roadmap of really, I mean, cool features. There are right. great features. It's just, it's going to take time for some of these features to become commercialized, become available, especially uh, to, um, uh, to folks who are uh, looking to implement private 5G networks. And so, um, I don't know, it's, it's really early days and I think um, there was early excitement at the beginning of the year. A lot of people will say, hey, look, we've been talking about private networks uh, for three years, but really the hype started to kick in at the beginning of the year. That's when we did our, um, that was about the time that we did our first uh, radio to yeah. the, to the, to the Rick. Rick. Yeah. A podcast. So um, I, I think one of the things that I would say is expect this to be a challenging road and um, that, you know, getting too excited about uh, certain things is probably not uh, exactly the best um, uh, approach to uh, finding a path to value. And I think that's, this is what we've had to do with a lot of these uh, hypes that the industry has, I, I would say, suffered. Uh, over the years, and in, in particular, in particular now here at MWC 2023 in Las Vegas, there's a lot of soul searching happening. And in fact, if you look behind us, you're not exactly seeing the biggest crowds. Um, I think there's a bit of uh, a bit of um, uh, you know contemplation about the state of where we are in the industry, and um, uh, that is happening and is actually pretty. Uh, apparent in in what we saw in the attendance and and also the content. Yeah, I think the one there was one nugget that I was surprised about in private five G wireless, and it's not here in the U S. and uh, it's looking overseas and looking at what Orange is doing with Casa Systems and their cloud native cores and what they're offering. And I think that template might be one where. Uh, people here in the U.S. need to look at that and is that something that can be replicated and is that the right model going forward and mm -hmm. from my perspective I think the operator needs to be involved in some way yeah. uh, and most of the deals that we're looking at or some of uh, most of the case studies and examples don't have the operator involved and maybe it's because okay there's 4G on CBRS and that's yeah. unlicensed but in anything that's licensed spectrum uh, if we look into China and some of these other countries, and again, specifically Orange over in France and some of their properties in yeah. Europe, uh, I think they have a pretty good template now of how they want to go to market and how they want to do their uh, enterprise offering uh, within the five or six networks that they have over in Europe and how they can enable with this cloud uh, native solution from CASA uh, quickly uh, deploy and get the systems and get the software and get everything sliced, updated and get everything out to the enterprise clients that, that they're trying to sign up. So that was kind of hopeful from the perspective that that was one interesting template that I don't see here in the United States at this point. Yeah. And maybe that's something that, you know, this market needs to look at. Yeah, and I, I think uh, those templates are going to be hard to come by just because the availability of, you know, the sort of this harmonization of uh, of um, spectrum policies that would foster private networks is is definitely a work in progress, uh, and but is an essential thing, right? And I think that's one of the things that came out of our panel discussion, um, hosted by the uh, Alex Besson and the Besson Group, is that you know without the spectrum, the available uh, availability of spectrum to serve the purpose. Uh, of the application that you're trying to uh, to ride on top of that private network, uh, none of this stuff happens, right? And so I think that's really the big challenge and the discovery happening with CBRS Spectrum where you have a GAA versus PAL. Uh, there's a lot of complexity there with, you know, the shared versus, you know, the PAL licenses where you have a, a, a bit of a higher, uh, you know, you know, a higher tier of priority. Uh, in uh, in that um, shared spectrum regime, so uh, there's a lot of a lot of things that we have to figure out still. Yeah, you know? I mean, there's you know again that's we, we have at. the C band uh, yeah. or S band spectrum at three one to three three that's supposed to be auctioned by the end of next year. That's going to be shared similar to CBRS. So this whole notion of there's going to be more spectrum, but 
how do you actually utilize it is going to be, I think, a, a key part of uh, how people go to market on private wireless. And it's not just L1 connectivity. Yeah. That's just the table stakes to get you in the door. But what else are you right. trying to solve for that end customer? I'm not sure there's a very clear path and strategy as to how they solve those problems that the end customer has. Or yeah. are you just only doing connectivity? And that's yeah. pretty mundane, right? Yeah, and uh, yeah, I agree. And you know, just uh, one final point. I think you know what we're looking at here is definitely a, a, a more a, a more focused lens forming on uh, value. You know, um, I think you don't hear a lot of stuff about metaverse and you know what is there earth computing and things like that. Uh, I think there is a much larger appetite now here for things that make sense and near-term value, which I think is super healthy. So this is a good thing. This is a good thing. But anyways, um, I think we're running a little long here. But uh, you know what? If you want more insights on uh, Mobile World Congress 2023 here in Las Vegas, you know, follow Earl Lum at EJL, uh, www.ejlwireless.com. And of course, uh, you can follow Next Curve at www next-curve.com and uh, you know subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll find uh, the Radio to the Rick uh, Analyst Series podcast there and uh, make sure to like, subscribe and all that nice stuff and we will see you later. Thanks Larry.